Hey guys, I'm back. In this video, we're going to talk about something called GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. I've done other videos on this. I guess this would be part three. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to do this video is because I had several people on my show bring this up. They were doing the usual things. It wasn't working. So I guess this would be a part three just to help people that have tried the usual things and it's not working. Okay, first thing, what is it? What is GERD? It's a situation where you have acid that's going the wrong way. It's going up into this little tube right here from the stomach into your esophagus. Okay, so it's, it's, it should be staying down there, but it's going up through the little valve here. So it's really a problem with this valve. The valve is not staying shut. Now, it'd be nice if we can just call a plumber and get the valve replaced and problem solved. But the usual thing that's causing this is that there's not enough acid in the stomach. Here you are, you have GERD and you have this acid reflux. You're thinking, wow, I have too much acid. It makes sense. That's logical. But in reality, if there's not enough acid in that stomach, this valve, which has sensors, will pick that up and it won't close properly. So it's kind of an open valve. If the stomach is between one and three, which is very strong, this valve stays shut. That's how it works. Now, there could be other causes as well. There could be a situation where you have a problem with your part of the nervous system called the autonomic nervous system that does control valves uh, because your adrenals are really, really weak. That's a potential cause. But most of the time, it's just that you don't have uh, enough of the acid and it's not strong enough. So that's what's causing this. So it's very counterintuitive because you're operating as if you have too much acid when in fact, it's just the opposite. And this is why it's very hard to fix this problem because you're doing all the wrong things. Now, medically, what they'll tell you is number one, lifestyle changes, which I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that, but you have to change your lifestyle, but they don't get into specifics. Number two, there's medication. Number three, if that doesn't work, we can do surgery. Very um, low, very low emphasis on the exact right food, so unfortunately. If you look up medically what causes this condition, um, it's kind of funny because they say, what causes GERD is acid reflux. That's like saying the cause of hypothyroidism is low thyroid hormones. You're just describing the whole thing. You're not telling what really causes uh, this problem. So they really don't know. Okay, risk factors, they always say it's obesity and pregnancy, okay doesn't really give us any good data. But if you just go about this as if you have not enough acid and you add more acid, you're gonna be shocked to find out that's actually gonna improve the situation greatly and maybe even resolve it, okay? Now, I just wanna to touch on anti-acids for a second. In America alone, there's over 15 million people that are prescribed anti-acid medication. That's not counting all the over-the-counter antiacids. So it's basically a $9.5 billion industry. Okay, so what the problem is when you take these antiacids, you never cure the problem. You have to keep taking them and keep taking them and keep taking them. Um, and the problem is there's massive side effects. There's one uh, here for something called PPI, that's protein pump inhibitor, which has a purpose of lowering the stomach acid. But there's some slight minor complications increase risk of death by 25%, increase risk of dementia by 44%, increase risk of heart attacks by 20%, and you're also gonna increase your risk of, of stomach cancer by 50%. Totally insane. And people are still taking this, and this is still being prescribed. All right, so now that you know what this is, what do we do? The first thing that I would recommend is to start taking apple cider vinegar in a pill or in liquid with your meals. I would also then add something called betaine hydrochloride. It's a, an acidifier. It's a natural acidifier. And you take it before the meal. And you can take it in pills, like three or four or five or even six before a meal. What's going to happen is going to start building up your acids. And by the way, one of the causes of low stomach acid is low salt because sodium chloride, the chloride helps make the hydrochloric acid. So that could also be one cause. Now, if you take either one of these and you feel worse, you get like a burning sensation. That means either you have gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach wall, or you have an ulcer. 
So you don't want to continue to add acids to an area that's like sensitive or you have this hole in your stomach. So you want to back up first and start consuming something like chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, um, like from a concentrated leafy green, a wheatgrass juice powder, or something that can actually heal those areas for a while. And it's going to probably take a while for that to heal could take months. Licorice root in the extract form is really good for um, that as well. Okay, so now if you take this and you don't get uh, this excessive burning, but you still have the problem, then you may want to start working on the lower intestinal uh, friendly bacteria down here. Uh, because if you have enough uh, bacteria, which by the way makes lactic acid, it'll help sometimes balance the acids up here and things will work better. So um, taking a good probiotic uh, may help you. And the one that I recommend is called Effective Microbes and I put a link down below for more information, but um, probiotics can actually greatly help this because it's, it's actually improving one part of the digestive system um, to actually take the stress off this area right here. Now, one really good food for gastritis acid reflux or any problem with the stomach is cabbage. Uh, sauerkraut is good, but coleslaw, cabbage seems to be very soothing on the uh, digestive system. So that's just an extra little tip. Now, the last thing I want to bring up, there is a situation where you may have a condition called SIBO, S-I-B-O, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Okay. That's a situation where you have too much bacteria, friendly bacteria, in your small intestine, and it really should be in the large intestine. I put a link down below for more data on that. But if you have that, you're gonna notice when you consume vegetables, especially in larger quantities, you're gonna get a lot of bloating and gas. Okay, that would be a good indication of that because you're actually feeding those microbes. Also, if you take a probiotic, you're gonna feel worse. All right, so if that's the situation, you want to um, follow what I'm going to recommend in the video down below, which is avoid vegetables for one month because the microbes consume the fiber in the vegetables and you don't want to keep feeding them because you're going to make them grow and they're already in the wrong place. So we want to avoid that. And then we want to also add the apple cider vinegar and the betaine hydrochloride because we want to make this really, really acidic. That's going to help the digestion at the stomach level because if we have an incomplete digestion here, we'll get undigested food down here and that's going to be a mess. Okay, so if, if there's a possibility you might have SIBO, we have to address it a little bit differently. Of course, it's a given that you need to do healthy keto, cut your carbs down, and many times that alone will solve this issue. And let's not forget intermittent fasting. An average time period for food to travel through the entire system is between 35 and 40 plus hours, okay? How often do people eat? very frequently, right? They can't even go three hours without having to eat or snack on something. So we have a lot of food that is in our intestinal tract all the time. And we're wondering why we have GERD, right? So it's very healthy to do intermittent fasting, especially for this condition, because you're allowing your digestive system to finally, for the first time, rest and calm down and not have to work so hard and actually just clean it out. You'll get great improvements in, in the healing if there's a gastritis situation or an ulcer. Intermittent fasting is probably one of the most powerful things you can do to improve your digestion overall. So we don't want to forget that. And then that'll give your system a chance to reset and heal. All right, there you have it. Uh, this, is, this is more of a complete um, video on what to do if you have GERD. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.